Welcome to another armor review. I am honestly baffled by how many people seem to find my opinions vaguely entertaining, but I'm here for it. There are five tiers, or possibly five and a half. Let's go. I'd wear it as a top tier, and it's pretty self-explanatory. I wouldn't hate it if I had to wear it as a costume. I might quite like it. Pretty good is for things I wouldn't necessarily be overjoyed to wear, but they're definitely fine. They're solid. Not actually armor, available in various merchandising kind of forms. This one is my husband's hoodie. Is our necessary category for things that I have been asked to review, but that clearly were not meant to function function as armour, but we'll talk about them anyway. Also on the yellow level I have introduced a new tier which I have decided to call eh. That stuff that's not as good as pretty good and not as bad as could be worse, it's just eh. Moving right on down, could be worse is the stuff that's clearly meant to be armour and it tried, it really did, but it's just not very good. And right at the bottom is my personal favourite tier, just stab me now. This tier is mostly for things that are so non-functional that they would get you killed in a combat setting, but occasionally they're also just for things that I really hate. But this is just one person's opinion and if you don't like it, you can always make your own video. Yours would probably have fewer digressions, I'm just saying. At this point I might have got myself a mug of something hot and fortifying, but the mug is in the dishwasher so I will cut in some footage of future Jill enjoying a nice cup of tea or whatever. Don't ask me how much later in the day this was filmed, nor how many layers I'm wearing underneath this. Let it never be said that I'm subtle, because it would be a lie. Alright, let's go. The Jadoon from Doctor Who. Because the list of things I have to review is still so long, I have a tendency not to really look into things past what I can see on the picture and pick up from a Google search for more pictures. But I used to watch a fair amount of Doctor Who, so let's talk about the Jadoon, aka humanoid space rhinos. Not to be confused with the Sontarans, aka humanoid space potatoes. Sontarans have a deliberate weak spot built into their armour on the back of their necks so that they are discouraged from running away. The Jadoon are basically intergalactic mercenary police types, so they do not have that. Diegetically speaking, I think it looks quite good. And if I were a giant galumphing space rhino, I would not object to something which is basically muscle cuirass, helmet, terriers, and a general biker look for the rest of you. The feeling I'm getting is Hoplite meets goth cast member from the tribe. Side note, does anyone else remember that show? There was a virus that killed all of the adults, so now the teenagers and children were left to run the world, basically, and the main group lived in a mall and they all had manic panic hair colours and scribbled all over their faces and every single person and wore giant clumpy boots. It's over 20 years old now and I don't know how to feel about that. Also my first ever crush on a fictional character was one of the characters in that show and if you've ever seen it I'm going to leave you to guess which one it was. You can you can give me your guesses in the comments. Anyway we were talking about the Jadoon. Diegetically if I were a humanoid space rhino I'd wear it because it looks you know pretty comfy and protective and it covers your entire body. Non-diegetically wouldn't necessarily be such a fan of it because it looks really sweaty to put on. But Richard Price, who wears these among other things for a living, said it only takes 10 minutes to put it on which for full body coverage creature suit kind of stuff Probably, that's not that bad. That's not that bad. And yes, it's probably all made of pleather rather than hyper advanced space materials that make it more comfortable to wear, but still, 10 minutes, that's gotta be worth at least a pretty good. Especially because there's a helmet. Aloy from Horizon Forbidden West. Speaking of the tribe, which we just were, we're going post-apocalyptic for this next one. Uh-huh, you thought it was just a pointless digression? You were entirely right, but let's pretend that I know what I'm doing. Because they're post-apocalyptic, I'd probably give the Horizon games more of a pass than many other things when it comes to what they're wearing, because you just, you can't necessarily get everything that you want to. You don't necessarily have the tools to make it into a shape that you want. That being said, this one is clearly meant to be armour with the spolder like stuff and the breastplate that's an actual breast plate. Just stab me now. This outfit I like, though it's not actually armour as far as I can tell, but I have had archers come on the channel and tell me that they were worried about Susan Pevensey from the Narnia movies because she was wearing a sort of battle corset thing, which would give her, you know, arm and shoulder mobility for shooting. I was about to say arching. Arching was clearly not the right word to go for there. Anyway, she also had a lot of random buckles and they were kind of concerned that the random buckles would get caught in her bowstring and file up her shots. And so it is with the necklaces. I don't hate the necklaces, I quite like the necklaces, but I'm just saying maybe you might want to tuck the necklaces in, otherwise they might get caught on your bowstring. This one I would rate at least pretty good, or maybe I'd wear it, depending on whether or not their society can shape metal. If they can't really shape metal, is that why she's not wearing a helmet, she's just wearing a sort of thing? on her head? Or is this some kind of plot point? Does she use it to commune with 
the bees or something, I don't know. Moving on. Brotherhood of the Wolf. I should explain that all of these are patron requests and I have not even got near the bottom of my list yet, but you know, we're making our way through. But Brotherhood of the Wolf is a movie with a lot of really nice period-ish costumes that I really enjoy. Are they historically accurate? I don't know, but I like them. They're really pretty. But it also has this leather raincoat getup with this really high collar that you can turn up and button up so it covers your whole face like you're wearing a mask. They're even color coded. There's this guy in the black coat and then there's this guy in the sort of tan and brown coat and you can tell the difference even when it's raining and they have their faces covered. Convenient. Now from what I can see it seems to come under the category of not actually armor. But I have to say, I really like the detail of the color that you can button all the way up to hide your face or protect your neck, I suppose, which might be something you'd need to do in a movie called Brotherhood of the Wolf. Are there werewolves in it? I don't know. They might not know there are gonna be werewolves in it. There might not be werewolves in it. I haven't seen it, but if there are werewolves in it, you know, that's gonna help. Also, I like that it has a really high split at the back, which makes fighting and horse riding easier. Not actually armor but I like it. Dune. I was a little bit confused by this request because the only thing I could think of were the still suits and still suits, as far as I'm aware, are not actually armor. They're something something moisture reclamation, something something recycling all your bodily excretions, something something they probably smell really bad. Also in the new movie, there are some unfortunate shapes on different pieces of the still suit, which you know what? Say no more. Because I figured out what it is I'm supposed to be reviewing for this request, which is the stuff that Poe Dameron and friends are wearing over here. And it looks really interesting. I do worry about the articulation on the arms, but I guess there is a bit there, so it's probably not too bad. And there are helmets! Yay helmets! Practically speaking, I'd hope it's good you're at least getting a lot of coverage, and you kind of need it if you're going for an aesthetic like this, because what this says to me is medieval plate armor meets the University of Warwick, which, for those of you unfamiliar, is basically medieval plate armor meets concrete breeze block. Aesthetically speaking, it's just not my cup of tea, you know what I mean? Which leads me to assume that these are the baddies, or at least that they are stern, uncompromising, and ruthless. If that's meant to be the vibe, then top tier, I'd wear it, I like it. If that's not meant to be the vibe, and they're meant to be the goodies, then I'd still give them a pretty good because I kind of like it, but aesthetically, it's kind of... It's sending messages that you might not necessarily want to. Vikings, as in the TV series Vikings. There are a lot of these, so I tell you what, we're gonna look at a couple of them and I'm gonna tell you what I think about them, historically speaking, based on what they're wearing. I thought you said you didn't really discuss historical accuracy, Jill. Well, usually not, but I know a tiny bit about the Vikings, so let's have a go. Because you know how I go on about helmets? Well, turns out Vikings, in general, didn't really wear helmets because they didn't wear a lot of metal. Some of them wore metal, but only the really, really rich ones. If you had a helmet which was probably something like this, it either meant that you were very, very rich or that you were a professional soldier. So on initial inspection, I was liking these guys because they're clearly protecting this dude in the very fancy embroidered coat thing. But then I looked at the vests and I am unsure what this is meant to be because the studs in it make me think that it's meant to be brigandine, but it doesn't really look like brigandine. And to the best of my knowledge, Vikings didn't really do brigandine. Lamellar, maybe you could justify. Chainmail, yeah, if you had a lot of money or were a professional soldier, perhaps. But brigandine, no. And random fabric armor with studs in it, also, no. Why would you waste the metal? Assuming it was an actual brigandine and historical accuracy didn't matter, I'd wear it because I like it. It's simple. You're covering all of your vital bits and you got a helmet. But historically speaking, I feel like it's more in the realm of could be worse, because an attempt was made, you know? And the thing is, I think they were attempting historical accuracy, because look at this picture over here. You've got guys in fabric armor, quilted gambeson type things, spears. That's very correct. Good job. So why would you give these guys the helmets and then a pretend brigandine vest? I don't understand. Anyway, it's cool that they have shields and spears, though. So that's great. This lady, I assume, is the blonde from the previous picture, and so she is really kind of rich, and so she can afford metal armor. On first inspection, I thought, I'd wear that. That looks really really cool. On second inspection, why are all of these random leather inserts there? If the leather is just going over the top of things, then that's still grand. But if it's not, why would you introduce weakness in vital spots like that? I don't understand. The thing about a male shirt is it's very flexible. You don't need to add in leather for anything other than aesthetics. Still and all, it does look like she can move and breathe and fight in it. And also, yay, a shield. And since shields were apparently like the primary defensive thing that Vikings had. Maybe we'll give it a pass, you know? Our last one for today is Edelgard's Emperor class armor from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah. Yeah, I got that right. And 
I'm having a bit of a flashback to last time, actually. Because in the last armor review I did, I reviewed Maple and I got a lot of stick for saying that she was in the Just Stab Me Now category, because a lot of people pointed out, not unfairly, that she was carrying a giant shield and even if she didn't have a helmet, she was armored probably more than your average Greek hoplite. But while I'm going to give Edelgard a higher rating in quite a similar outfit, I stand by my opinion on Maple, even if I now know that she is a character in a video game and so of course she can use and handle that shield. It's a video game! The video game aspect would also explain why the Quirrus is completely skin tight, because skins. And apparently it doesn't even matter what she's wearing because something something min-maxing. Or so I am informed. But there are two reasons that I gave this a Just Stab Me Now rating, so let's have a look at both of these and I'll try and explain a little better. The first reason is that this is ostensibly a teenage girl and I can see her bare upper thighs and it kind of a little bit skeevy. I would not have been so skeeved out if they just coloured in all of her legs red a la Edelgard as if she had leggings on or something, but no, no, we had to go for the sexy schoolgirl over the knee socks look and it's just kind of... ugh. Mm-hmm. Right. Sexy schoolgirl style greaves. Why? But the second reason is that there is a style mismatch going on and it messes with my head. The armour is black, and the fact that the armour is black says to me medieval period. Not that they wouldn't have had the technology to make armor black before that, but it was very common in the medieval period to paint your armor or to blacken it with oil to make it, you know, rust proof, corrosion resistant. But for better or worse, black armor says to me medieval. So if I'm already thinking medieval when I look at this picture, then when I look at her waist and upper legs, I'm thinking fold and tassets in the medieval style rather than terriers in the hoplite style. Again, that might just be me, but the fact that I'm thinking medieval style full plate armor and then I'm seeing all these big bits of bare skin just kind of makes it weird. And couple that with the fact that she is meant to be a teenage girl and you're like, mmm. Which is why Edelgard, for all that she is missing a helmet, is doing better. Because one, adult, and two, trousers. And yes, I would like a helmet if you're going full plate style, and yes, it is weird that a woman who has spent so much time and money and metal covering her body would have weird cutouts in that metal around her neck. And those tassets look impractically long to me. And yes, video games, so it's a skin tight thing because skins. But it's a definite improvement. I would have given it a pretty good, but those cutouts around the neck, man, I think we're just gonna have to go with... Eh. It's a good effort, I've definitely seen worse, but... Eh. And that's what we've got for today, so I'm going to reward myself with a nice cup of tea. I'll see you all soon.